Hi, and welcome back to another Build Fun Things video. This year, I gave myself the challenge of finishing all of the Advent of Code puzzles before the 2020 Advent of Code starts again. There have been five years until now. So far, that's been 125 puzzles in total, and I want to finish them all before the new ones start. Today, we're going to start at the beginning at 2015 and puzzle one. Just log into the website adventofcode.com and here we go. Day one, not quite lisp. Uh, Santa was hoping for a white Christmas, but his weather machine snow function is powered by stars and he's fresh out. To save Christmas, he needs to needs you to collect 50 stars by December 25th. Collect stars by helping Santa solve puzzles. Two puzzles will be made available on each day in the advent calendar. The second puzzle is unlocked when you complete the first puzzle. Each puzzle grants one star. Good luck. All right, that sounds like fun. Here we go. Here's an easy puzzle to warm you up. Santa is trying to deliver presents in a large apartment building, but he can't find the right floor. The directions he got are a little confusing. He starts on the ground floor, floor zero, and then follows the instructions one character at a time. An opening parentheses means he should go up one floor, and a closing parentheses means he should go down one floor. The apartment building is very tall and the basement is very deep. He will never find the top or bottom floors. And then there are some examples. We'll use these samples as input for our tests. Let's take a look at our puzzle input. Probably just one big line. Yeah, take the puzzle input. And I've started my solution by just implementing my uh, basic structure, two parts. So part one and part two. Uh, the functions return a string, something that we put in uh, the, the field. Uh, and they take a list of strings as input. In this case, it will only be one line, but most puzzles, I would imagine, have multiple lines. First thing we'll do is create a test case. This is a standard skeleton that I use for the tests. Um, for each day, test sample input one, uh, or part, uh, test sample input two, which is the second part, and then the real input, which just takes the input from the file that we gave it. Let's add our sample input. Now that we have our sample input, we can run the test case and it should fail miserably because we have not implemented anything yet. As you see, the, all the test cases here, they failed, uh, which is to be expected because we need to implement our logic. So let's get started. We'll make a function that will count to floors. We'll first do the most simple thing that we can do and then work from there. Uh, we'll work on a string, which is the input, because we know we have one string to work on. We'll start at floor zero, and we'll take every character from the uh, from the input string. Let's just make a simple loop, and within this loop, we can check to see if we have an opening parentheses or a closing parentheses. So we loop over the characters. If it's an opening parentheses, we'll up the floor with one. If it's a closing parenthesis, we'll lower the floor with one as well. Uh, I don't think there is any other case that we have to take into account. So let's, so we connect it to part one now. Uh, we have to wrap the return value in the string dot value of. Do the count floors with the first thing in our input. So we ran it, the test case passed, only uh, test sample two uh, fails. The test real input fails as well because we did not give it an expected value, but it is telling us that it calculated floor 74 as being the floor that Santa will stop on. Let's throw that into our puzzle. Bam, that's the right answer, yay. Now, given the same instructions, find the position of the first character that causes him to enter the basement, floor minus one. The first character in the instruction has position one, second character has position two, and so on. Let's update our test case. At this point, we can create, we can modify our current function. We can also create a new function to do what it's supposed to do. Let's do that. That makes it easier. 
hit basement function will do pretty much the same thing as count floors only it will tell us at which point we hit floor minus one i copied over the code so we replaced our for each loop with a traditional for loop uh, and uh, changed the comparison between the characters to suit the new types so all we need to do is to say if floor equals minus one return i plus one because we start counting at one while the index starts at zero so that should be it now let's connect the part two to our function and now we see that the only test case that fails is the test real input means our second test case for the part two data was successful so it tells us at character 1795 it will have hit the basement let's verify if that's the correct output yes it's right it was an easy puzzle to get started with. Uh, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for puzzle two.